Okay, welcome back to SixSigmaTV.net. Um, in this phase here, I'm going to take you through a high-level introduction to the DMAIC process and then also the define phase. So the DMAIC methodology or the Six Sigma methodology for Lean Six Sigma or Six Sigma, um, we follow a methodology called DMAIC, D-M-A-I-C. And what that is, is we have the define phase, the measure phase, the analyze phase, the improve phase, and the control phase. We're going to take you through an overview of all of these phases, but first I'm going to start with the define here in a second. In the define phase, what you want to do is you want to uh, obtain customer requirements. You want to clearly scope your projects and have them aligned to your uh, business strategy. You want to put together your charter, you want to map your process, and get a good understanding of what you're getting into, just defining your objectives, defining your goals, and laying out your roadmap for where you're going with this project. In the measure phase, you want to quantify your performance uh, of your process. You want to calculate your sigma levels, and you also want to do what's called a measurement system analysis, which is when you're putting your data collection together, you want to make sure that it's valid, that everybody's on the same page when they're gathering your data. We'll go into a little more of that when we get into that segment of the, of the measure phase. Also one thing too is when you're doing your calculating what's called your sigma level or your CPK or DPMOs, we'll define that for you if you don't know a little bit later. You can also do that in the fine phase. I have seen teams do that also to get some baseline metrics and that's what those do is they give you baseline metrics. The next phase after measure is what's called analyze. Here we identify and quantify the root causes. We establish your improvement targets. So we've driven down into your data. We've identified the root causes of your issues. Why are you not meeting customer requirements? Why your sigma level is low? Why you're having defects? Why your roll throughput yield is too long? Cycle times are too long? All of those things you're trying to fix in, in your project. We analyze that and we dive down into establish those improvement targets. In the improve phase is when we start redesigning that process. We validate the solutions. We pilot those solutions and make sure they're valid and have targeted those root causes and have, and have eliminated those reasons for you uh, having poor process performance. And then in the control phase, we establish uh, mistake proofing. We do our risk assessments. We standardize the processes. We've identified that our, our pilot was valid. We look at our cost benefit analysis and we establish controls and hand that back over to the process owners to make sure that you sustain those the improvements through your project, for that project. So I'm going to take you a little more in depth into the define phase right now, give you a better overview of what the define phase is. In the define phase, you want to um, tie your projects into your strategic business objectives, customer complaints, issues, breakdowns, market changes, those kind of things. That's what drives your projects. You want to make sure they're generating revenue for you, eliminating waste, and making your processes more efficient. Your champion then, or your process owner, or your, your manager of that group, which we call the champion, who's the sponsor of the project, they will bring all that together, identify the project manager, um, and that's the person who will help them put the business case together, your problem statement, your goals, your timelines, all of those kind of things. Then we want to get some primary and secondary metrics using your DPMO, your standard deviations, your process capability, all of those kind of tools that will help you establish a baseline um, for this project. We might want to look at defects using Pareto charts. We'll do a process flow and understand what we're getting into. So you want to clearly identify the reason for doing the project, establish achievable goals, align the project with your organizational priorities, define the roles and responsibilities of all the stakeholders for the effort, document your current state, what is currently happening, not what you want to happen, but what currently is happening. Identify all the customers, the inputs and outputs. Where are the problems existing in the process? Define the customers with differing needs. Segment those customers. You might have different customers for that process or different products coming off that process line. So what are their requirements? That's going to help you understand the voice of the customer. Make sure you're focusing on delivering what the customer wants. You want to collect and prioritize those customer requirements. Um, so in this phase, you want to have a clearly defined scoped um, DMAIC project with a timeline. 
clear understanding of the financial impacts. We want a hard savings out of these projects, which are going to hit the bottom line. Uh, we can have soft savings also, but the hard savings are what hit the bottom line, and that's what you want to focus on. And you want to have a thorough understanding of the customers of the process and a list of prioritized critical to customer requirements, or VOC, voice of the customer. The components of your charter in the defined phase, you have a business case, a problem statement, a goal, an opportunity forecast, or the end result, the scope, initial metrics, stakeholder planning, project planning, and also risk planning. If you look at this next slide, you'll see all the things that can help you with that business case. Now, business case in the defined phase is a high level of why is it important to do this project. And if you look at our project launch template, that'll help you identify your business case at a high level. How is this impacting the business, the customers? Why is it critical to do this project now? You can see all the things that feed into um, what might help you develop that business case. Information, customer feedback, market share changes, uh, baseline metrics are shifting, those kind of things will help you drive that high level business case. Then you want to develop your problem statement in the defined phase. It's a concise statement of the problem. What is wrong? Not why it is wrong, but what is wrong? Who is impacted by the problem? Um, where is the defect happening? When is it occurring in your process? And how large is the problem? Then you want to have a goal. Um, a goal is smart. It is specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and it's time bound. We want X to happen by the end of the month. Just plain and simple. One sentence or two. What is the goal? What is the end result? It usually starts with a verb. Reduce variation. Achieve a certain percent of customer satisfaction. Control this variation. Increase revenue by X percent. So it usually starts with a verb. You want to get some initial metrics. Cost of poor quality. Rolled throughput yield. Process capability. I'm not going to go in depth because this is a white belt course. It's just giving you an understanding of what you're getting into if you proceed moving down the path of being certified in Six Sigma as a green belt or a black belt or a master black belt. But these are some initial metrics that you'll want to look at. Your rolled throughput yield, your process capability, your defects per million opportunities, and your cost of poor quality. Cost of poor quality, we want to uh, understand the preventative cost, the cost to prevent errors, appraisal cost, cost to detect errors in your process. Internal errors, things that have made it down the pipeline, not visible to the customer yet, but that you've caught in-house. And then the most crucial ones, the external failures. If your product reaches the customer or service reaches the customer, um, what is the external failure cost when your defect happens when it gets to the customer? You want to look at your stakeholders. They could be your boss, coworkers, government, future customers, your team, all of those kind of things. You want to understand who has a stake in this project. You want to select your project team after you've identified those stakeholders. Their leaders, you want to have a master black belt. At minimum, a black belt help you and coach you, especially if you're moving along at the beginning of your, your Six Sigma implementations. You want to have a coach or a mentor. Um, that's usually a master black belt, sometimes a black belt in some organizations. So once you select that team, that black belt or master black belt will help you stay on track um, moving forward and, and, and coaching you along. You want to have a communication plan in your defined phase. You want to be able to communicate throughout the organization what's going on with this project, who's going to be impacted, how are you going to communicate with all the stakeholders at different levels. Some stakeholders need to be um, notified daily, some are on the project team, some just need to be informed about what you're doing so when the changes happen, they, know, they knew they were coming. So this template here, you can pull down from our website at sixsigmatv.net and it'll help you with your communication plan along the way of your, your project. You also want to look at the risk of doing this project. We have a thing called um, a risk prioritization uh, template that you can use that helps you understand the risk, legal risk, risk to the customers, risk of not doing the projects, all the potential things that can be a hazard to this project or the things that you could be impacting in a negative way by doing this project that you haven't looked at before. So the risk uh, mitigation template is on our website also you can use, understand about the risk as you're doing this this project. 
The next step in the define phase is to map your process. If you look at this template here, we have basically four levels of process mapping. High level is very strategic, the overall organization. Then we get down into the business process, and then we want to focus where in that business process we were having the problems. We want to flow that out more. And then we want to get real micro level detailed because that's where we're going to gather our, our X's that are impacting our Y, which, is, which means all of the little activities we do, inputs that we do to get something done, how do they impact that output? And that's where you start identifying those root causes of things that are creating variation and problems in your process. So we get down to a detailed process map. Um, this next template just explains a little bit more about the types of maps and when you'll use them. And we'll dive deeper into it as we go further down into the yellow belt and green belt training. Then you want to use voice of the customer. Once you've mapped out your process, you want to understand where the problems are happening and how they're impacting your customers. Customer surveys, um, interviews, focus groups, those are the kind of things that are going to help you see where in the process these things are happening and how they're impacting your customer. And your project should focus on voice of the customer in a lot of cases when you're doing Lean Six Sigma or Demaic Six Sigma projects. You want to translate those voice of the customer um, information into measurable items. You want to make sure that everything you do, in as much as you can, you want your data and the voice of the customer to be measurable. All the things that are impacting your process, you want to be able to measure them somehow. You don't want subjective criteria. You want measurable criteria um, so you can measure it and control it uh, throughout your improvement and sustainment of your, of your project. So translating that voice of the customer into measurable information is critical to the success of your project. So in the defined phase, as you see, there's a lot of things to do. Um, understanding your charter, identifying your stakeholders, your goal, your end result, mapping the process, and make sure that everything is tied into the voice of the customer, the CTCs that are going to help you improve the process, generate revenue, reduce variation, lean out your process, and keep moving forward. The next phase is measure, and our master black belt here at SixSigmaTV.net, Steve Finney, is going to take you through that phase.